is this thing called tonic fake data. And so uh, I'm trying to chase this guy down because I really want to invest in this company now after I heard about it. So my, so I have a cousin. I got a couple of cousins that are in tech. I got a three, I think three or four cousins that are in tech. Uh, one of them, my cousin Samir, he tweeted this. And I think his tweet literally has two likes, which is just a shame because like, this is actually like an amazing Twitter thread. I'll, I'll retweet it right now. So let's go see it. It's on my Twitter feed now. Um, but he's like, you've heard about big data, but yeah. what about fake data? Have you ever heard of fake data? I had never heard of this. So he's like, check out this company called Tonic Fake Data. And uh, they grew about 600% this last year. And, uh, and he starts to like tie some things together. So he's like, you remember when HBO had that thing where the intern accidentally sent an email to every subscriber? And um, it's because, you know, they were doing a test of, a, of, of a, like a, some software system, the email system or whatever it is. But when a developer is doing a test, they have to input some dummy data, right? Some information. Um, and, and so typically like, you know, a developer will just kind of like make it up. It'll be like first comma last name, you know, like they, they're just trying to get through the task quickly. So they're just like inputting yeah, fake yeah. data, you know, just from their head. And, um, and so, you know, if you think about this at kind of like a bigger level, let's say you're testing, um, you know, your Uber and you're, tr you have a new feature in your app. And so he gives this example, basically like, let's say you're Uber and you are releasing this new thing about notifications. Um, and so you, there's like this process of quality control testing, right? So they'll, they'll, ha they'll try to like, okay, sign up as a new user and try it. Okay. Let's say you're, you're already a user, log out, log back in, pretend you got a new phone, right? There's all these, like, if you have a product that has hundreds of millions of users that are living normal, weird lives, there's all these random different paths a user can take and you kind of need to test your product through each. And so, um, and so there was a guy, this is, this is kind of the famous thing is, there was a guy who he had logged out of his account on his wife's phone. But even when he logged out, she kept getting the notifications because of just the, like the developer didn't test the feature properly of this use case. You go to a new phone, you log in, you yeah, accept yeah. notifications, then you log out, you're still getting notifications somehow. Like, and so, I, which we did all the time. I would walk around and be like, hey, who here at the office has an Android? Let me see it real quick. Right. Yeah, 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 exactly. Who's got an Android? Okay, I think we tested all of Android. It's like, dude, there's like, 200 models of this thing. It's like 2,000 models. You think you just tested Android because, you know, the one guy who's an Android bro, like, you know, used it for a second. So what happened with this Uber guy is uh, his wife got a notification that he was going somewhere or like, you're, you're, you know, your ride is ready or whatever. And she's like, wait, he's supposed to be at some other place. And she found out he was cheating. He ends up suing Uber $47 million because, you know, wife found out about this left hand, blah, blah, blah. The cheater sued Uber, which is hilarious. And so uh, he's giving well, all these little win? examples. I don't know if he won or not. It's not in the thread. I haven't, I haven't done more than thread. So, so he gives another example. Let's say, um, uh, here's the last example. It's 2008. Um, the financial system is crashing. Banks are failing. And banks owned at that time, if you remember, like the subprime mortgage crisis. They had basically on their books a whole bunch of mortgages that they needed to get rid of. And so they needed to sell them super fast because they were like, they were at risk of going bankrupt. And so they, they set up a call center that any re real estate investor or buyer could call in and make an offer on one of the mortgages they had. Because like an auction, it's like, you know, closing, you know, final sale, everything must go was the, was the idea. And uh, so they hire Palantir, the big data company that Peter Thiel started. And they say, hey, come up with a recommendation engine that will figure out what offer we should accept because we, we don't have time to like vet each offer as they come in. It needs to be quick. Like a garage sale type of decisions of like, hey, I'll give you two dollars for it. Will you take it? Yeah, go 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 ahead, take it. Uh, everything must go. And so, um, so the developers were like, okay, we need to like test our recommendation engine for like, should we or should we not accept the offer? But they couldn't use the data because the data had like all this personal sensitive information, right? It's a person's name, credit score, their income, their address. Like, it was too much information. The bank couldn't just give it to Palantir and say, hey use this real data to figure out what offers we should and shouldn't accept. And so what they did was the developers went to the bank's office, they go inside the building and they looked at the data and they said, okay, we understand we can't take this data and use it for our models, but we can re replicate this. So like the way a mannequin is a replication, replica of a human body or whatever, they did that to the, to the real bank data system of all these mortgages. And so they created a replica that, that would, have the same, like, let's say distribution and, and outliers and whatnot, but it was all dummy data. It was all fake data. And so they'd use this, they go back, they create this thing, uh, they create the model. It's all successful. It all works. So what happened is 
I think the guy from Palantir took like spun. I think he's for ex Palantir. He spun out. He is and was like, I'm Ian gonna Co. create this. Yeah, Ian, Ian Co. I'm gonna create this for any business because business businesses need to be able to generate fake data sets to test it, all their scenarios from. Like the Uber example, show me all the things that users do, all the all the different like they do this step, then this step, then this step, then this step. Cool. I need to be able to simulate those steps. Um, uh, accurately. And so what they do is they basically say, all right, people are pretty sensitive about privacy and data nowadays. You got GDPR. So companies can't be using digi- using their data for these things or giving, giving data to other groups for it. So tonic fake data can basically analyze your data, create da- dummy data, and then let your developers or other developers use that data, those fake data, that fake data that mirrors the real data. And so I thought this is like such a niche problem that you would only understand if you'd ever been through this. But then once you've been through it, you're like, shit, this solves a big problem that they have no other way to solve. And I love this. This is the opposite of guy who can code makes a to-do list app or makes a, a music streaming, you know, like a playlist generator based on the music you like, right? Those are the ideas everyone has that everyone can do. This is an idea no one has that pretty much no one could do. And so I'm like, dude, I'm like super bullish on this idea. And I love this. Um, I love this. And especially now with machine learning, with machine learning, you need a lot of input data to make recommendation engines better. Well, how do you do that? How do you get more data? Well, you can simulate or, or create fake data that mirrors a small sample of real data. So I just think it's awesome. It goes on two big megatrends, privacy and machine learning. And I just love that I had never even thought about this.